Hello and welcome to the Luxury Lounge. That's right, every Thursday we head into the lounge, we shut the door, and we air our grievances with the world. And you're allowed to grievance. Grievance? You're allowed to complain about anything you'd like. Anything. The luxury of the lounge is the ability to just let it fly. And my guest and I will sing the complaint song with you. We will go with you. We'll find a way to encourage your complaint, to agree with your complaint, to add on to your complaint. We might find a hole in your complaint in a direction you've never even thought of. We will find complaints in your complaint. That is the beauty of the lounge, to come here and let it fly. So if you have a complaint, send it in. Jtrainpodcast at gmail.com. Jtrainpodcast at gmail.com. We took a little bit of time from YouTube world. We're back on YouTube. So if you want to watch this episode, we are doing it remotely. We are on Zoom because I am in Boca. We're taping this. It's it's a nighttime taping, which in the podcast world for me, that generally doesn't happen. Usually it's an afternoon. We got some sleep in our eye. No, I got a drink in my hand. If you're watching on YouTube, I got a Boca looking drink in a great plastic cup. I got my guest also here having a drink themselves. I don't know what they're there for some LaCroix. reason. It's a LaCroix. Okay, we'll we'll just have fun with LaCroix. I have the you know the bar I have a polar sparkling. Respect. Which if you're watching on YouTube has marketing to make you believe that this sparkling water is the sweetest, most tastiest thing you've ever had, when in reality it's just a sparkling water with a hint of, I believe, uh, lemon, raspberry pink lemonade. It looks like it's the sweetest thing that you have on a street corner from a couple of kids making a couple extra bucks. But we won't go too down the lane of Tangentville. Very excited about today's guest. He is new to the lounge, but not new to the J-Train universe, making his quick return. He has a one-man show, okay? And and thanks to this podcast, because he was such a fantastic guest, and I got word that there was many people who went, who are listeners here, that went to the one-man show. It is called Solo. It's off Broadway. It's got a six week extension. It's also coming to LA. Gabe Malika, thank you for coming back. Oh, Jared Freed, it is my pleasure to be here. I have done so much press, and no single podcast appearance has had more fans DM me, come to the mm. show, take a picture, ask follow up questions than the Love luxury than, than the J Train. You got you are the new Johnny Carson. That's right. People, Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to get a sitcom deal. I'm going to be Ray yeah. Romano now. Your fans That's right. are rabid. And here's my second compliment. This is a real compliment because your Please. listeners are going to love this. Listen, hold on. Let me strap in. This is Compliment City. This, this is a big one. I know in my life, in a casual, we could hang out way, probably four hot people. And I mean, by hot, I mean, they go someplace and people are like, who is that? Like they right. kind of like put their drink down. And literally after I did your podcast, all four of them messaged me. You know, I love Jared's podcast. I've been listening to that for years. I didn't know you were oh, going to be on there. <laughs> the, I, uh, the, the hots. I got the hots. You have the hots in spades. Hots wow. are coming out from from hot people I don't even really know that well are DMing me from uh, middle school. Really? You have the hot comedy audience. It's the best <laughs> audience in the world. It really is. Unbelievable. I, I, I am very lucky. Um but you know, you you get what you deserve. I do believe this. <laughs> I think um, so too. So I I it is funny. We'll we'll we're gonna sit here and just whack each other off for a few minutes and we're in the lounge, the door is shut. Don't worry about it. Because I get compliments at every club I go to. It makes me I am weirdly proud about it. Every club we they go, your audience, everyone that comes to see you, there's polite, they drink, they have fun, they're up for any material, they tip, and it's like I get chills hearing that. Like I, I and I'm like, I don't know why I take such pride in it, but it is a reflection. And I'll say this you came on the show You came on J-Train, we gave advice, and 
you were fantastic. And I got messages too. Oh my God, love that guest. I got to see what else he does. And that's the beauty of a podcast is you can walk on to someone's boat. And that's why the J Train podcast is here. It is to bring on my comic friends, the people I look up to, the people I think are funny. Come on my boat. And this is a Bill Burrism. He 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 famously said, I want to be on someone else's boat. I'm taking this from him. But come on my boat. Uh, dance on the you know the, the the deck, and maybe someone's gonna like your moves, and and that seems to be the case with you. And I remember walking away from the episode that you ta- tape, thinking, "Wow, fantastic! Can't wait to have him back." So you get what you deserve. You're a good comic. You're hilarious, and the show I heard is amazing. It's you know it's going really well, and that's the that's the other thing too. Like for me, like hotness is like it's also an aura. It's also like mm. you're you like. There's a there's a confidence to you, but like everyone who messaged me was like super nice. Yeah. And whether they're like people I hang out with or people I hadn't talked to in a while, just like they're like, we're into it. We can't wait to come. Thank you for the promo code. If you DM right. the, the DM messages I got, even from strangers, I didn't know. Oh, I Love can't it. make it. Let me know next time. Just like rabid fans. And so, so I'm very appreciative. So now that we've left the land of <laughs> masturbation for both of us, we want <laughs> We want people to go to your show. We want people. It's called Solo. I want you to give like the for people that may have missed it last time. Give us the elevator pitch. I think it's a great, pre- you know, the, the, the premise that you're speaking with is very up the alley of this fan uh, base. I, it's, uh, obviously, because they were so into it when it came out to the show. So what is Solo about? And it's going to be reopening January 11th. So that's in next week or whatever. And uh, it's going to be at the Soho Playhouse. And it's going to be in L.A. So you can go to at Gabe Malika on Instagram. Go follow. Go get involved. And go to the link in his bio. Get tickets. Assemble the group chat. This is for the crew. What give us what solo is all about? Solo is a show about how men, and particularly me, but men in general, maybe like don't have friends or struggle to right. make friends or don't feel connected to their friends that they do see. And it's it's kind of like a Mike Birbiglia hour. Uh, mm-hmm. If you know him or Hassan Minaj or Jacqueline Novak, all these kind of storyteller comedians. And since my last run, I've hired a director. I'm working with this guy, Greg Wallach, who worked with Hassan Minaj on Homecoming King all the way from Off-Broadway to Netflix. Love it. So I got a great team. And there's a lot of jokes and stories. What what does a director do for you? How does it change the show? You know, we're we're cutting. We're we're, we're talking about it more like theater. So I'm no microphone. We're going going so I can like, walk handsy. around. We're getting handsy. We're doing. We're making mm-hmm. real choices. We're we're going over the script. We're adding graphics, kind of like Hassan Whoa. does with pictures from my past. Well, um, I'll say Hassan something that he does, and I'm a big Hassan Minaj fan. And um, I went to his last show that came on Netflix recently, and he, the way he uses colors to kind of go with your emotional state during the show, oh, it yeah. was effective. It it really does. It really makes you feel it. And is that kind of what you're talking about? Oh, yeah. I mean, I hired this a lighting designer who's just like, what I do is lights. I think in lights. I oh like my God. he watches I the love show. That. So it's I love he theater. shows up. He shows up in a beret. Le- and you're like, who wears, are you? He literally wears a, a, a beanie. That's Come on. literally Yes. Yes. You hey. know, you. Yeah. So we're turning into <laughs> theater like it's the stand up jokes. I would do it near a comedy club. Yeah. But now we're adding in. Oh, like. Is there going to be betrayal here? There's a hint of red in the lights. Like you can kind of tell where it's going from lighting choices. Oh, Um, I'm so excited for you. Uh, We want everyone to go check out uh, Solo. It's off Broadway. uh, Soho Playhouse. GabeMalika.com. That's where you can get the tickets. Also at GabeMalika on Instagram. And also I'm verified, LA. Jared. My, my, I'm, I'm looking at you right now. You, you, things have changed me, since last time. All my, <laughs> all my hot fans they got brought verified. that verification through. <laughs> that so sweet, sweet blue check. Gabe, where, where in LA are you playing? I'm playing the Yard Theater, which mm. is like mostly um, an improv and solo show space, but it's a theater, you know. Um, and we're inviting lots of cool people. My friend Avital Ash who's okay. huge on Instagram is opening and she's been in Barry and lots of great stuff. Amazing. Um, and it's going to be January 27th at nine 30. And we had to add another date cause it was doing well. So the Love next it. day, the 28th at 7 PM. So two chances in so, LA. Listen, LA, New York. Um, and that's the thing about a one, one person show. Like, I love what you said. You're like, these are the same jokes at New York comedy that I do at New York comedy club, but I'm, you know, with this production value and a storyline 
And here's the other thing. That's always something that's like hit me where they always say like men die earlier because they have less friends. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The data on male friendship is out of this world. It's crazy. So do you get into that? You know, I'm adding in more of that. We're trying to make it through like my lens, my perspective, as opposed to like literally a TED talk. But I would like to do I know you've done one. I would like to do a literal TED talk with data and talk about this stuff because men feel lonely. Men feel like they don't um, feel connected to their friends. And my number one advice after doing this show so much is just like you're on your phone all the time. Pick it up and call your friend. It's so easy. Have a chit chat. Yeah. Put in your, and you know what makes it easier? I'll say this. Put in your headphones. Have oh, your headphones yeah. in. That makes a phone call go twice as long. When you have your hand to your ear, you're like, get this person the fuck off the phone with me. The yeah. minute you put on Do Not Disturb, you throw in your headphones. You're like, am I on a podcast with my friend? Like, it changes yeah. things. Yeah. And it's don't play video games. Just walk around and talk to your friend. And I'm telling you, the women in your life are going to be like, were you talking to your friend? That's adorable. That's so cute. (laughs) Women do like when two men talk on the phone. Weirdly, it is. uh, I have a friend that I talk to on the phone a good amount. And I remember that was something that like when I was, you know, when I was in a relationship, they were like, that was something that like intrigued them in a weird way. Yeah. Yeah. Like, are you sharing your feelings? Like, maybe. (laughs) Maybe. (laughs) Or we're just talking about boobs. You don't know. Or our feelings on boobs. Listen, Gabe Malika, we're so pumped to have you. Uh, Everyone go follow Gabe at Gabe Malika. I'm on the road, people. In addition to Gabe's show, which you got to go see in New York and L.A., I'm going to be in Toronto. I'm going to be in Vegas, Perrysburg, Ohio, Vancouver, Vancouver, Irvine, Indianapolis, Oklahoma City. January 16th, I'm also adding... The links for all my UK uh, and Europe shows. So I'm coming to the UK and Europe. I'm coming to Copenhagen, Berlin, Amsterdam. So those are coming January 16th, those links. Um, let's get into the lounge. Uh, you ready to hear some compl- You ready to do some complaining? Oh, I got a big complaint. <laughs> Good. Before we get started, uh, what's the first thing you do when you wake up? Is it check your credit score? Didn't think so. At Chime, that's exactly what they do with their secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card. You can start to build credit with your own money. Chime reports your payments to credit bureaus to help you build credit over time. Their members see an increase of 30 points on average. All of this with no annual fees, large security deposits, or credit checks to apply. This is an amazing opportunity because right now it's, you know, people get into resolution mode. It's the new year. Some of you are like, ah, I want to make sure my banking is in order. Or, again, your credit score. Members see an increase of 30 points on average people and with no annual fees, no large security deposits, or credit checks to apply. That's amazing, people. So this is a good opportunity. So start your credit journey with Chime. Sign up takes only two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at Chime.com slash JTrain. That's Chime.com slash JTrain. The Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card is issued by Stride Bank and a pursuant to a license from Visa USA Chime checking account and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply for the secured Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card. Regular on-time payment history can have a positive impact on your credit score. Impact to score may vary, and some users' scores may not improve. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees may apply except at MoneyPass ATMs in a 7-Eleven or any AllPoint or Visa Plus Alliance ATM. Let's get to it. You ready? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm going to start with my complaint. Hit the music, Shelby. Jared, he has some problems. Jared, he's got some issues to do. Get off his chest right now. Jared has a lot of issues. Jared has a issue with a lot of things that we can discuss. Can you relate to the problem now okay here's the thing i'm in boca right now and i'm in a community and gabe you know this i don't i think this is relatable even though the story i'm about to tell is unrelatable so i wake up in the morning i put in my headphones i listen to my podcast i take a little bicycle i ride it to the club at the club, there's a fitness center. They have coffee out. So I go make my coffee. I play my Wordle. 
I chill. I try to get in my, you know, my zone before I go to the, I actually try to make sure I have pooped before I go to the gym. Okay. So this is all part of my pooping journey. So I sit in this outdoor space and I kind of chill. I really, ah, I'm breathing, I'm whirling, I'm doing all the things on my phone. This person comes up to me and they're like, and I've met them before. And they're like, oh my God, Jared Freed. And I know that they're like, it's, this is all compliments. Again, we're in the luxury lounge. Oh my God. Jared Free and I go hi and you and here's the thing I can't go I can't look up and be like not now bitch it's wordle time I can't do that you gotta be polite Mm -hmm. and she goes you gotta meet my kids they love you and I'm like listen this is the greatest compliment in the world but it's coming through telephone like I'm receiving the compliment from the kids who supposedly are big fans of mine. Okay. I go, oh, they're here. And she goes, I'm bringing you over. You're coming over. You're coming over. And I get up. I go, come on. And right now I'm like, I'm doing the, as the Jews say, the menchi thing. I'm going. Yeah. A mitzvah. A mitzvah. Get up. Get out of your chair, Jared. Go receive the compliment from people who like your stuff. She goes, my grandkids over there and my kids, they knew you before you were anything. And I'm like, of course I'm going to go over. So I get up and I take the long walk of 30 feet. And but it feels like it's seven years long. (laughs) And she's like, oh, my God, they're going to be so mad at me for doing this. And I looked at her and I gave her kind of a like a jokey response. I go, but you still are, you know, like I tried to like <laughs> fuck with her a little bit. Yeah. She's not even phased. She's yeah. unfazed. Yeah. She goes, come over. I go over to this family, daughter, son-in-law, grandson, husband. They were like, who's this? <laughs> and- <laughs> no. <laughs> no enthusiasm. Like, not even, like, it was as if they were bothered by me for agreeing to this. Oh, and I gosh. go, and she goes, it's Jared. <laughs> you guys love him. And I'm sitting there, like, just, like, straight face. And they're like, oh, wh- what? Who? Like, yeah. they're not giving me anything. And it's nothing. like, nothing. And I go, and then I have to. Now turn it up to make up for this, to make it less embarrassing for myself. Yeah. <laughs> right? So it's I'm like, like the- hey. Go ahead. Yo, it's like you're doing a cameo, but you're there. It's like it's if like, you bu- <laughs> it, it's like doing a cameo that someone was like, why did they buy this for me? Yeah. If you give a bad cameo and the person doesn't know, you never have to see. Right. That's, it's I- off in the world, but you're in person. You couldn't have nailed it more because literally if someone bought a cameo of me for someone and the person was like, I don't know if they know that I'm not that big a fan of his. I kind of said I liked him once. That was the response. And like if I was on the other side of this, I would be giving more than these than than the daughter and the son in law gave. Like I I would be embarrassed by my mom. They seem to have offshored this on to me. They were like, (laughs) hey, oh, you do that comedy thing. And then the dad is like looking at me like. Who's this guy? And then the the mom is still at a 10. She's like, get in with the baby. She has me take a picture no. with the baby. Oh, brutal. So now I'm I'm like smiling. I'm putting on a show because now I'm, I'm with the baby. And it's like, here's what this has created. If I do not get any more successful than I am now, that picture of me and the baby is the most embarrassing thing of me that could ever be created on the internet. Who's he? Oh, we <laughs> thought he, he was a comedian. Now he's now he doesn't do that anymore. He sells insurance again. Like I, I'm like imagining. Yeah, and they know their mom is weird, right? right. Like they just know give me she, something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just so this makes me think, Jared. Like, like because there's now like people people that have seen my show will come up to me. It's not like right. world famous, but like. Every once in a while, people are like, oh, I saw your show. Right. Um, and do you, are there people that you like would would say something to at this point in your life? We're like, whoa, man, I just need to let you know that I'm a huge. Yes. Fan. 
Yes, who, who but would I tell? would be but I would be good at it. That's the thing. Like <laughs> I know that. That's this is funny. this is the thing. This is my my complaint isn't that they came up to me during my, you know, morning hours. I don't care. I love that. My yeah. complaint isn't that they like my stuff and they wanted to talk to me about it. My complaint is like don't like like give me something. Don't make me feel like a dick for yeah. you liking my stuff. This happens yeah. a lot. This yeah. ha- people come up to you and they'll go I remember there was one time some woman came up to me and she was like, she was like, oh, I love your stuff. And I was like, thank you. And she goes, you probably love it when people say that to you, huh? You probably get <laughs> like off of that like shit. You're like, like, <laughs> you're like, can you just not do this to me? Like, why, like, how about like some people think that a compliment can't be received well. And I think I'm good. I'm like, I'm like hand to heart. Can't thank you enough. This is amazing. Oh yeah. my God. I would take off my hat. I'd get to my knees. I'd start sucking their dick if I could. <laughs> like I really am so appreciative. And yeah. sometimes, and, and when I came over to them and they were just like, what? I'm like, I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. How did yeah. I get pulled into this trap of embarrassment? You know? Yeah. You could have been anybody. You like in that moment, right. you, could been, you could have been the waiter, the waiter. Remember right. him from the other right. night? And they go, oh, no, maybe at least the waiter wouldn't be like brought it. Oh, you got to take a picture with the baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, that picture. I'm sure the, the look, the I'm sure the sadness in your eyes. <laughs> you, sad you sad clown. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Gabe, go for your uh, let's get you to your complaint. Hit the music, Shelby. It's the guest's turn to complain. They're ready to jump in. They've got lots of problems, too. It ain't all about Jared. Let's hear their complaint of the day. Let's hear their complaint of the day. They're invited on the show to have some fun and complain with you. Let's hear that complaint. Okay. All right, I am ready. This is this is a very New York City complaint, but I'm ready for it. In okay. New York City, if you have all the money in the world, mm-hmm. you can get the world's best sushi. You yes. could spend a bajillion dollars and have an omakasa, and all of it is crafted perfectly, or it's a nice mm-hmm. date, or it's an anniversary. You can get top-tier sushi. And you can get as much of it as you want. Oh, it, yeah. There's no limit. There's no like, ah, maybe an extra roll is a little bit. Oh, we won't get the dragon roll. It's 30 bucks. No, you're there's no looking at the price. It's it's infinite. If you're at right. the high end of the sushi game, it's it was in Japan this morning. It knows three languages. Right. Great sushi. Right. <laughs> but if you want if you want mid tier sushi, like sure. you're in a suburb somewhere, not good. As good as uh, in my experience grocery store i'm going to places in a story i'm like this place looks good not good rice right. is crunchy what's going on I, I i go to the suburbs i'm like oh this is the lap of luxury you can eat a nice sushi sushi meal for right. 35 bucks in new york in manhattan in particular that's my there real is, issue there is no mid-tier sushi i agree with you there there is a thing i remember growing up like my family was pretty early to the sushi game we liked eating sushi oh, and yeah something over the years has erupted there's been classes to sushi now the omakase is at the top now there's that little place that like the persons you you and the chef hold hands the whole time and now there's also now a version of sushi that is that mid-tier like you can get like a bunch of rolls and really have a good time but it doesn't exist in the city in the city it is either fine high end or you're sitting next to a mop bucket and you should only get delivery from there. Like it's like there there yeah. are places in the city where it's like seeing it ruins it. You it is seeing how the hot dog is made. And I know yeah. exactly what you mean. Oh, yeah, because I have res- uh, reverted to in Astoria. There's a 24 hour health food store. And okay. sometimes I'm like for eight bucks, I can get a bad sushi roll. That's like pretty fresh. I'm like, I'm going to do that. Right. I'm going to do 24 well, that- hour sushi. That's the thing. The minute the mid tier goes to lower tier, you're pushed to lower tier. Yes. You know, yes. and and th- there is this thing. I think the suburban sushi place is this like hybrid Japanese Chinese Thai also yeah. has sushi. One hibachi and grill. One yeah, right. <laughs> one birthday happening in the corner. Yeah. Listen, are you ready to complain, Gabe? Oh yeah. 
J Train Podcast at gmail.com. Let's get into it. We got a bunch of complaints. If you want your luxury lounge read, you got to te- uh, email it in J Train Podcast at gmail.com. Title it Luxury Lounge. We also do a Patreon version of this show. Patreon.com slash Jared Freed if you want to get involved with that. Okay, Luxury Lounge. When trees attack. All right, Jay, I'm new to all this. So feathers and ball tickles and all that. Let me get right to right into this. I'm tall. Okay. Six foot six inches tall. That is tall. If I'm being honest, being this tall is actually a nonstop luxury lounge complaint. I can't walk past somebody anywhere without strangers feeling like there's the obligation for me to either reach up and get something for them off a shelf or stop and appease them because they want to talk to a tall person. Do you play basketball? How tall are you? What size shoe do you wear? I'm always busy and have shit to do and don't have time to entertain people. But besides all that, here's my luxury lounge complaint. They haven't even gotten to the complaint yet. There is nothing worse than taking a leisurely stroll down the sidewalk and checking my messages on my phone only to look up and be assaulted by shrubbery. People in places who have trees near a sidewalk never trim the branches that hang over the sidewalk. So when I'm walking, I'm constantly having to duck down and weave around and under branches in order to avoid getting smacked in the face by leaves and spider webs and everything else. I'm not going to lie. Being tall has its advantages, but this is definitely not one of them tall people problems. Gabe Malika, what do you think? I I respect this because right. I think people are not very creative when they see tall people. Right. And Me I included. Yeah, yeah, Me we're all included. tall here. <laughs> no, I'm I'm not tall. I'm not creative when it comes oh, to tall people. Sure. Yeah. When because... I see a tall, I have to ask them. Yeah, yeah. You want to know. I gotta know. What is that? How tall? Tell me now. I think because a lot of people who are around our height are like, if I were a foot taller, I bet I could have played basketball. Every I, think all I, believe it. I think we all believe it. I think I I agree with you. People are height. Or like if I had a foot, the world would be mine. Yeah. I would step on all my enemies. I wouldn't <laughs> I wouldn't I would never make eye contact with any of these short people. Yeah. And girls would love me. Girls would love me. I could eat whatever I want because now there's more surface area for the food to go to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I, I I agree. And and I just was at I did shows in San Diego and there was a guy there who I met after the show with his fiance, and he was tall and I and I, I literally stand next to him, I go. How tall are you? Like I couldn't yeah, we get around know. it. I gotta yeah. know. I just gotta know what life is like. I and it is an envy, I guess, when you're asking. You you're not asking because you're disgusted by it. No, no, we're morbidly curious. We're like, ooh. Right. <laughs> right. Here's where I love their complaint, and I totally agree with them. Texting and walking is a part of life. It is something that I don't think any of us are proud of doing. Mm-hmm. I don't think any of us are like I. I mean, I would assume we all think we're good texting and walker walking people. <laughs> Everyone thinks we're amazing at it. Yeah. We think we're amazing. <laughs> if you were caught behind someone texting and walking, and they were holding up your day, you'd be like, "Get this fucking person out of my way and behead them in a town square." Here's the thing: I have bumped into people while texting and walking, and you were immediately embarrassed. You're immediately like, "Fuck, who saw?" that I am that addicted to my phone. If I was tall and had the added element of shrubbery. Oh yeah. I would it be, all angles. It's more chance for embarrassment. And that's where this person is correct. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I imagine that's very difficult. And the right. fact that people keep asking this poor guy to get stuff off the shelf. I am right. five foot 10. No one has ever asked me to get something ever. off the shelf that I couldn't reach. I'm always ever. like, Oh, it's right here. If you're if you're five foot one, I'm like, oh, I can reach it. I've never right. not been tall enough to reach basically anything <laughs> in a grocery I, store, Target. That is one of those things. That, reading that from them, I'm like, who's who are you? What what are you, Groot? What are you, <laughs> Rocket? Have, yeah. you know, sitting on your shoulder? Like, what's going on? Yeah. In in that way, our height, Jared, is perfect because we're too right. low for shrubbery, but we're high enough. To grab shit off the shelf. <laughs> That's the sweet spot of life. Right. We we we've won this whole thing. <laughs> this game, yeah. We have tall guy confidence. Right. I I would you rather be okay short and never have to worry about money or tall and 
you're doing okay, but you got to work. Wow. How short are we talking? Let's say you're five foot two. Wow. That is a great question. Five I... two, never have to work again. Wealthy beyond, you You know, you don't, you're not going crazy, but you, you know, you don't have to work again. Yeah. You always have money. Five foot two, always have money. Five, six foot three, you got to work, but you're doing okay. I always, I'm going to choose not working. I think always. I can figure <laughs> that shit out. I think <laughs> day two, I'm drinking a virgin Bahama mama. I'm like, right. yeah, I can still talk to girls. <laughs> They'll <Right>. notice. <laughs> it is funny that you first thought of talking to women because I thought the same thing. Because six foot three, in my opinion, like the there are so many women out there just from the male perspective where they go height gets you women like that is your first thought and five two but you got all the time in the world to like you know you you could work on yourself right pick up golf <laughs> do a, a master class from steve martin and get a personality <laughs> yeah literally that <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm on the monthly master class i'm doing all types of stuff i'm, right. I'm making a brisket I'm living right. my life. Oh, six three, whatever. Br Brisket's <laughs> worth about two inches. J Train Podcast <laughs> at gmail.com. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. We're here with Gabe Malika. Go follow the show. It's called Solo. It's in New York and LA. Just got extended. That means it's amazing, people. You don't have to choose between better hair growth and your health. There's a holistic solution for men that promotes both healthier hair and whole body wellness. I have to say, Nutrafol is amazing. My mom is using Nutrafol. I got the, you know, they give the people who do the ads a little bit of a taste of the product. My mom was like, I want to try it. She keeps getting more and more and loves it. So I'm telling you out there that she has had a great experience with it and keeps on the plan here. So Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement clinically shown to improve your hair growth, thickness, and visible scalp coverage. Nutrafol multi-targets the root causes of thinning, including stress, hormones, nutrition, metabolism, aging, and lifestyle through whole body health. In a clinical study, men, because they used to only be for women, now they got it for men. Men showed progressive improvement in hair growth and thickness after three and six months. Nutrafol is also trusted and recommended by more than 3,000 and top doctors you can grow thicker healthier hair and support the show by going to Nutrafol.com slash men entering the promo code feather to save $15 off your first month's subscription this is their best offer anywhere and it's only available to US customers for a limited time plus free shipping on every order get $15 off at Nutrafol.com slash men spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com slash men promo code feather love that Okay, here with Gabe Malika, Luxury Lounge. Kitchen staff tips. Jared and Larry's guests, Feather Feather. Let me jump into it. Today's Luxury Lounge complaint contributes to the conversation around over-tipping. Last weekend, my husband and I went out for date night. When we got our bill, we were shocked to see that it had not one but two tip lines. One was for regular tips and one was for the kitchen tips receipt included. I don't know if I have it here. Um, I've never seen that. Have you? No, that's, that's, that's stressful. Have you ever worked in a restaurant game? I have not. I have not either. So we might not be two great people to, to really say, uh, give reason to this or know the inside. Cause I was always told you tip and then they give, you know, uh, and that tip is split amongst the whole group. Like, you know, the, you, you were getting like the tip of the, uh, of the, of the spear, so to speak, but with your weights, when you're tipping the waiter, they represented the bar back, the, you know, the bus person, the, uh, the kitchen staff. So it's a big jar, right? Didn't you, didn't you, wasn't that what you were always told as well? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and if you're going to go against that, it's already, we don't explain it to tourists. It's already right. like, there's no fine print. We're like, Hey, right. wh where is this going? We all have to assume this. So if you're going to add in a second line, so we're two pretty smart guys who like restaurants. Right. You got to explain. You got to know what's going on. Yeah. Hey, give us an extra 5%. We got guys working in the back. They want to well, send their kid to camp. Just tell me. <laughs> right. Well, what's been going on to this date? Like, 
We don't, yeah. you know, we like, don't even know the, the first line. You want to add right. a second line? We had no idea. We understand that the wait staff has a low hourly wage to account for tips, but the kitchen staff, not wanting to tip more than what is customary, we were unsure what we should do. We felt like jerks for splitting our tip between the two because the waiter deserves their full tip, but also felt like jerks for writing zero on the kitchen staff line. Yeah, this is all about shame is my problem. Yeah. In the end, we left knowing we dis- we disappointed someone and left frustrated with the restaurant. Thanks for providing a safe space to air our grievances. Grievances sincerely disappointing diners. What do you think? Oh, I, I empathize a lot. Because right, it I sounds do too. like two people trying to do the right thing, trying to give some working people some cash. I'm all about right. it. But if you, it's just like you got it. You got to teach us. Tell me how to do it. Well, this is the thing, and this is kind of the problem with a lot of these things that are kind of the, we are being forced us, us normal people are being forced to fight amongst ourselves while the the puppet masters never get blamed. So like, there's been this ritual of tipping at restaurants that you and I. Our whole lives were led to believe that we were doing the right thing by tipping 18 to 22 percent ish. I know mm-hmm. someone's going to respond. To, ah, this always annoys me. I tip 50 yeah. percent. OK, you know, that's weird. Keep it to your fucking self. OK, yeah. that's a different complaint for a different day. Yeah. Here's the thing. We should not. The idea that now we are left to this awkward moment of two lines because those are shame lines those are lines to let you know that ah there's someone else with their hand out but that person has always existed so why all of a sudden are we left to and and you know there's now these restaurants that there's no tipping allowed they just put it into the bill and i 11 madison park that's right I, right that that whoever that person is that's become like because they have a restaurant group there's a bunch of restaurants they have mm-hmm. and i kind of am at first i gristled because i was like well i like to be you know johnny strongman giving out my my, my ones as if i'm you know uh, a big shot but oh, then yeah. the, the minute it's out of my hands i go Okay, that's the meal. And you kind of go, this is stressless. Yeah, they're the professionals. They figured this out. You, you know, you don't feel too bad. You're like, I imagine they're getting paid what they should get paid. Right. At a, at a place like co- that. Well, then you'd go, well, the the wait staff wouldn't work here if they weren't. If sure, they could less, work somewhere. Exactly. Right. If this was less than getting tips somewhere, they would go somewhere else. That is That is kind of the beauty of economics. But at the same time, when it had no tip to give, you go, Good to know. I actually would rather they go, we, I would rather every, I like when things are upfront. We add 20% on whatever you got. Great. Okay, great. There's an additional line. If you, if you thought this was better than 20, have at it, boss, but 20 is already there. That's beautiful. That's, That's beautiful. the way it should go. Don't tell me, well, this is going to go to the kitchen staff and the code check there's a line yeah. for them. Yeah. And there's yeah. another line for the electrician that comes in next week. Like, this is crazy. Yeah. I heard of a restaurant one time. I won't say what it was because I don't know okay. if I'm allowed to. There's a fancy steakhouse in the New York City area that had a okay. coat check. And they'd put a nice, cute little girl there. And she'd take your coat. And she's smiling. Right. And they had a box built into the coat check where you could drop money. And the restaurant at the end of the night was pocketing that money. It Come wasn't on. a tip. They were they used the girl to get the money and then they kept right. it. Which Taking is just advantage a yeah. of the ego of men across yes. this great nation. Yes, literally, yes. Which maybe they deserve, but it should right. at least go to that girl's college beer. Yeah, fight. let it go to her. Yeah. She was put out there. Yeah. J Train Podcast at Juma.com, J Train Podcast at Juma.com here with Gay Malika. Solo. One man show off Broadway just got extended male friendship. Everyone raved. I had people message me. They were like, unbelievable. Great suggestion. Luxury lounge. Water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. Jared, feather, feather. Before I get to my complaint, let me just say I love my apartment. I got extremely lucky during the pandemic after a string of awful apartment living situations and found a spot in a beautiful pre-war building uptown. I love it here. I also love my super. He's so friendly and I know I can call him for help uh, if I need it. But but fortunately, I haven't needed assistance more than once or twice. 
Last week, however, the water had to be shut off in my apartment building for normal run-of-the-mill maintenance. When the water was turned back on, it was a little brown and janky for a few minutes. But as one does in older NYC buildings, I let it run for a while and it cleared up. Nothing out of the ordinary, or so I thought. The water pressure in my whole apartment is now ever so slightly lower than it was before. But the subtle difference is infuriating. I have one of those efficiency-style shower heads with amazing water pressure. Not really aesthetically pleasing, but I always loved it for its fire hydrant strength. The normal distribution of water, the shower head is now all the normal distribution of water, the shower head is now all fucked up. Instead of about 20 strong, even streams of water coming out of the shower head's holes, there are like 12 narrow streams with 80% of the strength they used to have. Just enough of a difference for me to notice. The remaining few normal streams flow in odd directions, which I have not yet become accustomed to. So they inevitably end up spraying directly into my eye sockets. Even worse, two other streams of water now spray sideways, arching over my curtain and soaking my bathroom whenever I take a shower. My kitchen sink pressure is also weaker. And now I'm stuck trying to wash dishes in the same stream of water you get from a public drinking fountain. I told my super, and he has assured me that the pressure is turned all the way up in the basement and that there is probably debris in the pipes, but I am a handy-dandy, strong, independent woman and have already unscrewed the faucet cap and cleaned it out, so I know that's not it. He is coming to check it out tomorrow, but I have a feeling that these subtle differences in pressure will not be as perceptible to him, and I will be shit out of luck. I'm dreading the impending depression of having lost one of my favorite features in the apartment I have had. A stellar water pressure and losing faith in my super who am I, I've always trusted. This has gotten deep. I think I'm great. just I'm just hopeless after being burned too many times in the past by New York City apartment buildings misfortunes. So my exper- expectations for this getting fixed are pretty low. Please keep me in your thoughts and prayers as I am now destined to a life of spending 40 minutes to wash a pan under a dribbling kitchen sink after being permanently blindsided by unpredictable showerhead jet screen, streams. Thanks for letting me vent this one out. Flow woes. What do you think, Gabe Malika? I have one quick thought to begin, which is that Please. this this podcast, you need this is the Larry David hour. This is every right. these are all Larry David complaints. He's the ideal guest for this because Absolutely. water pressure, you can't go back. Once you, you have it go good, back. you can't go back. That is the that is the main theme. You you nailed it. You can't go back. You can't get lesser. You, 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 I'll never forget it. The first apartment I ever got in New York City, I didn't, I, when you first move into New York City, you don't even think, turn on the shower. You go, it's a shower. Why wouldn't a shower work? And then you find out all showers are not alike and it's not, and I think that's most people moving into their first apartment after college. You just never would have thought, let me turn on this shower once or twice. And I remember my pressure was so bad, and that's just what you've signed up for. And then every apartment that I looked at from then on, that was my first. I would go, I would look at it, go, okay, this is what I want. Let's see the pressure. Can I deal with this? Can I mentally live in this world? You know what I mean? Absolutely. I listen. Last year I had a pretty good year, and for a year I I joined Equinox on Sixty First Street, and that water, that Equinox water pressure, I would dream about. I am in an, I am in my parents place in Boca. I'm in the pool house, so to speak. Um, oh. Yeah, things, you know, things are OK here. There's a shower in this pool house that is known like it is talked about. It is <laughs> it, I, like my whole family, like people will take a shower or two here on, you know, on off nights. Like it is so good. Oh, it yeah. is. I take like four showers a day because the pressure's good. Yeah. It's life changing. You avoid the shower when it doesn't have good pressure. It makes you a dirtier person. Here's the other thing. I had this exact same thing happen to me. My apartment, they fixed the sink. The sink in the in the bathroom now comes at like a slow dribble. And every time it takes me longer to brush my teeth, to wash my hands, to do stuff in the sink, I think of what of times of the better days. I think back and yeah. I get even more angry. It's it's the, what you said. You can't go back. It's a loveless shower marriage. You need to get right. back that old spark. And I'm <laughs> telling you, Jared, you're going to the UK. Buckle up, uh, my friend. Oh, don't get me started. Buckle I was in, up. <laughs> I was in France and I'm I'm in I'm in Nice. I'll never forget it. I got in the shower. 
first of all, I got in the bath because I didn't see where the shower was. And I started showering myself off in the bath using like the, the sprayer. And oh, I'm yeah. like, I guess this is Europe. And then I was like, Jared, you're a fucking idiot. There's a shower right over there. Yeah. I got yeah, in the shower. Yeah. I barely fit in it. Never mind the water pressure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They they don't. It's it's a glass. You're in a phone booth that happens right. to have water. You got to turn it on. There's a switch in the hallway. So you got to go out naked, flip right. the switch. Then you hit the button. It's I That's was in why. One, oh, oh, go ahead, sorry. please. I was in one in Ireland once. I had a we had like a hostel or like a youth hostel where there was a button in the wall and you okay. push the button in and slowly the button would like slowly push back out. And that's how quickly the water pressure would die. So oh you get God. like a spurt no, 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 of hot no, water. No, 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 Oh yeah. No, no, and I was like, that's I like can't the sink live in like the, That's the sink in the bathroom in the Delta in the, in the airplane. Yes. You press yes. it while you try to wash your hands. That's horrible. Yeah. They did that with the shower. And I didn't know I was like a fast talking, impatient, luxurious New Yorker. Right. Until I traveled and I was like, oh, like I have a pretty high standard for what I need to become. Absolutely. They don't put you. You realize that the minute they bring you ice water and there's one cube. Oh, they don't do go, cube. I'm better than this. Yeah. I am. <laughs> I am an asshole. I, I was actually of the thought that that's why Europeans are smaller because they have to fit in that shower. Like. If and our showers bread. didn't fit us, we'd eat less. Like I, I've, you know, that's yeah. the luxury of being an American. We have a huge showers. We have land. We expand. That's you right. build a build a big shower. Put see the, the shining sea. Yeah. <laughs> see the shining sea of showers. Yeah. J Train <laughs> Podcast at gmail dot com. J Train Podcast at gmail dot com. Here with Gabe Malika. Go follow at Gabe Malika on Instagram. The show is called Solo Luxury Lounge. Password Hell. Feather, feather, I just want to scream. Yesterday, my iPhone 6 decided to crap out of me, so with my birthday coming up, I decided to splurge on the iPhone X. Passwords and Apple ID are making the change a fucking nightmare. I guess part of growing up is realizing password security is a real thing, and last year I started to get a little too creative with my new passwords. I have no freaking clue what my Apple password is and am now having to go through the process of resetting it. And then without 99% of the apps on my phone, I know the iPhone has password storage, but even some of those are wrong due to the changes I've made. It also doesn't contain the one I really need right now. I just have one universe. I just want one universal password, but is that stupid? How do I manage to have safe and secure passwords that aren't all the same, but also don't get bogged down in password madness? I know it's normal to have passwords that are all the same, but is that really safe? Am I being presumptuous to assume someone would want to hack my life and shitty credit score? Love, I didn't even want a new phone. What do you think, Gabe? Oh, this is so tough. This is a question so of tough. our age because we're we're in an age now where the – uh, the family member's birthday that we grew up as the universal uh, AOL password. It was a simple time. Right. It, it was my birthday and it was on the family computer and we all right. knew it. Right, right. And now we're going into pets and ones and exclamation points there. We need a, somebody should do a master class on this because I don't I don't know the right answer. I, I, I don't know the right answer. And, and what you said is correct, because we are. Gabe, how old are you? I'm 30. So you're 30. I'm 37. I would say our decade is this this able to use computers, able to be on top of like technology, but also seeing where we came from and having to go where we're going. We are kind of the beta generation. You know, we are oh, yeah. the test generation for everything internet. You know, Gen mm -hmm. Z will look at us and go, what do you mean? All you got to do is show your eyeball and you're good to go. And you're like... <laughs> You don't know what we went through. You don't know how many exclamation points and question marks we put at the end of a, a dog that we had for seven minutes. Like, you don't know. <laughs> and Apple's not helpful because they're like, do you want a password? And they give you, like, the, the world's long longest thing. That's not helpful. Somewhere Here's in between. What, no, no, the worst part is Apple will give you use strong password and you go, oh, this is great. And then it doesn't save it right away. So then you got to come back to the beginning and you go, I'll just make my own. It's it's almost like it, it's like, oh, here's the solution. And then it goes away right away because it doesn't save to your phone right away. Yeah, there's no there's no like manual on how to do it, because if there were people would then be able to hack it. Right. And, then, and that's the thing is we're all is, in the darkness. We all well, don't know. This is the most frustrating part. And they wrote about this in their email. Why is anyone trying to get us? 
Little old mm. us. There's bigger fish to fry. Why am I worried about my Venmo that has 200 bucks? Why do I have to worry about this? Why can't this be simple? Who are these people out there stealing from the poor and giving to the poor? Oh, absolutely. And these companies, they will not help you. You get hacked. But you, horror no. stories. They're no. not going to. No. And you got. And then here's the other thing. We all are living in fear. I'm anxious. If my phone does something I don't know, I'm like, there it is. That's the end of my life. Yeah. I have to change my name now. I will yeah. never be able to look, leave my fucking house again. Yeah. And we're on our phones professionally. And we're right. like, this is a mess. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mess. I don't know what the answer is. Like, And sometimes I'll put it like in one spot. Like I have like a notes thing mm -hmm. that you can go to. And like, and I that's put a password already a on mess my notes. too. I put a pat. I have a note with passwords, and I have a password on that note. That's and crazy. that's my standard. <laughs> that's crazy. We we are gonna be twenty years from now. We'll just all our time will be spent redoing passwords, and none of us will have jobs. Absolutely, doing the captcha, trying to get in there, <laughs> just a complete nightmare. It's J it's it's oh yeah. J Train Podcast at Gmail .com, J Train Podcast at gmail.com here with Gabe Malika. Oh, we have so many more emails. Okay. Luxury lounge. Uh, peace and quiet or potential heart attack. Jared, an all-star guest. I literally stopped working to write this because I nearly had a heart attack. For context, I work in a very quiet office, so I constantly have my AirPods in listening to music because I need some form of background noise. Anyways, my complaint. I'll be deep in the middle of writing documents, not even thinking about the music playing, when suddenly my ringtone at full blast starts playing through my headphones and without fail nearly gives me a heart attack. I swear the volume is louder than a child screaming in your ear. What I don't understand is when you have your AirPods set to announce the tone that plays for a text is gentle, reasonably volume sound. But when you get a call, the ringtone decides to be unhinged and blow out your eardrums. I know this can be simply solved by lowering the volume of the ringtone, which is done in settings or with the volume buttons when playing when nothing is playing. But my phone is on silent. There shouldn't even be an option to control the ringtone there shouldn't even be an option to control the ringtone volume. It's called silent for a reason. Sincerely, just a girl who's trying to have a peaceful work day. What do you think, Gabe? I think, first of all, the phone will now tell you, like, you're in the danger zone. It's too loud. I'm like, then lower it for me. <laughs> just like, don't ruin my ears. Like, you right. know, the phone knows, the phone like knows when we're going to die. The phone right. like knows literally, it can give you a date probably if you check your eye calendar. <laughs> so it's like, it's red in your ears. So like, they should just normalize that stuff. Like, oh, are you going to, are you going to shock me? Then just right. make it lower. I'm not going to be mad at you. <laughs> right. Do me a solid. Look out for me. I Steve Jobs. You were, yeah. When help, do these phones, when is the point when these phones start acting like droids in Star Wars? When do they yes. start becoming our pets and our assistants instead yeah. of just being this machine that we're like kind of sure of how to use? Yeah, I already am looking at it more than I'm looking at the real world. Right. <laughs> so it might as well just be my pet. I, right. I, Tamagotchi it, it, this shit. Yes. T yes. <laughs> they should have names and, and all that shit. <laughs> I have I have made it so my phone, I try to do this more often in the afternoons. My phone is in black and white. So I made a shortcut. I triple tap. What's it called? It's called uh, Scenescape or something. Yeah, that is to make like you less abilities. I tried to do it and I did it for a day and it's supposed to make you look at your phone less, right? When you make it black and white. Yeah. And I tried to do it and it was, I'm so addicted to my phone that I was like, there's no fucking way. I have to. This thing needs to coddle me and hold me to its nape and let me suck at its bosom because I cannot <laughs> I cannot have this be different than, you know, what it's what I'm known. known and it I, to be. I respect that. And it, because it's so powerful, it's just like lower the volume for me. You right. know, it's not supposed to be that loud. You have some engineer who's making 280 grand. Right. <laughs> just let him do it. You know, right. like you're already so good. J train podcast at Juba.com. J train podcast at gmail.com luxury lounge massage leaving me in envy jared all the feathers to you and your esteemed guests i just got a facial done at massage envy and i'm feeling unsatisfied before the pandemic my boyfriend signed up to become a member so he gets billed one massage and treatment a month no matter what over the pandemic he was hoarding them so when he started going back either they would cancel his appointment a day in advance when he showed up not hold hold up so when he started going back, either they would cancel his appointment a day in advance 
when he showed up not be available for him or sent a text saying they wouldn't be able to do the treatment that he made the appointment for. Last week was the straw that broke the camel's back and he's art and he's ready to cancel. But he has 14 sessions he needs to use first and asked me to help him out. Today, when I showed up to my appointment for a facial at a different location trying to avoid his same issues, the receptionist said the technician was running 30 minutes late, but I would get a free enhancement for my inconvenience. However, when I told the technician that, that during our consultation, she said that's not a p- when I told the technician that during my during our consultation, she said that's not a policy they have. The facial was nice, but the experience was not. I can see why my boyfriend wants to cancel. After being in customer service jobs for 10 years, I find these kinds of experiences really aggravating since I tried my best never to do this to a customer. I know shit happens, but this seems to be a company issue, glowing but grumpy. So I guess if I'm reading this correctly, even though we didn't need a lot of the preamble about the boyfriend having issues, uh, message to the emailer, um, is that they were promised uh, an extra for the technician being late and the technician was like, no way you get what you, what you bought and I'm not giving you the extra. Yeah. That's br- when you want lug, when you, a massage is a luxurious thing. It's really right. nice. You base your whole day around it. You look forward to it. Right. You want it to go smoothly. You it's about it expectations. Yeah. yeah. And then when you're waiting, here's the thing. They told you they're going to be 30 minutes late. So you're at your appointment. They're 30 minutes late. And you're sitting there and you go and they go, don't worry, we're going to give you a little extra. They hold above you a little carrot and you go, okay, I'll push back the day. I wonder what this carrot's going to be. And then you get there and they go, oh, the carrot's nothing. We, we just wanted to keep you here. You yeah. feel like you've been screwed. You feel like you you, you have been lied to. Yeah. I, it's it's like this big company and they got all yeah. these branches and they might not care. I, I'm, you know, t- get your get your 14 massages. That's a sweet. You got to finish right. those no matter how c- come hell or high water. You're going to get your 14 massages. Finish but after out. that, go, go small mom and pop. Go, go talk thing. to someone who's going to stand on you and break all the rules and right. just like just like change your life. I, I ran a marathon a couple years ago. Okay. And I could not walk. Still the next talking day. about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I could not walk the next day, like literally physically could not walk. And I got a massage that literally like gave I was like tiny Tim. I was like, I can right. walk again. This is amazing. So I know the power and the importance of a massage. Listen, but you got to go mom and pop. This is the reason I will say this. I have become a big Manny Petty guy. Oh, Jared. Now we're talking. Months. That's Oof. right. Oh, so Last good. six months, I've been going pretty much weekly. Oh, chair. And I, oh, I've been treating myself. Okay, those it. Patreon dollars don't go nowhere, people. Oh. It's going straight to the nail salon. I love and it. And I'll get that massage afterwards. Okay, and they'll go ten minutes, and I'll go ten minutes. I would say the massage in that chair with your clothes on from someone, and you just say, and I tell them, I go, just do my head and neck. Don't go anywhere else. Stay in the head. I want you to be like my girlfriend, but I'm paying you. Yeah. And they just do the head tickles. And I will say I would pay three times that for that rather than the whole song and dance of get undressed and put the towel on and oils and the thing. There's just so much less that can go wrong in that. I'm getting, you know, it's like a simple, it's a simplicity thing. And nail those nail salons, they're not corporate. They're all no, like right. some little family owned. The big Silicon Valley has not gotten in there yet because they know <laughs> right. they can't compete. They right. can't compete with these people because they, they they send their best. Well, I had a guy do my feet one time. And I was like, you I, I just gave him a huge tip. I was like, you changed my life. <laughs> my feet are clean. The nails look good. Right. Come on. J train podcast at Juma dot com here with Gabe Malika. Let's do one more. Is that OK, Gabe? Oh, yeah. One more. Everyone go check out Gabe at Gabe Malika Solo. It's a one-man show in New York. It just got extended. We are so happy that the J Train Podcast universe is a part of that extension. We want oh, people yeah. to go. L.A., they just added another show. So go to Gabe Malika on Instagram. The link is in his bio. Luxury Lounge. Cafe does not equal personal office. Good day, Jared and guests. I'm typing this complaint out as the offender is actively doing it. 
I'm at a cute cafe with my girlfriend, working on our laptop since we hybrid work. The cafe is a fairly popular place to get food and drink and also work. I like working at cafes and coffee shops because it gets me out of my house. I like to eat pastries, drink coffee, and eavesdrops on people's conversations. What I don't like... This guy rules. I, 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 I agree with this person. What I don't like is when people are having work calls loudly and also walking around while on a work call. This is a lady. There is a lady in front of me talking loudly on a work call. And at one point she got up to pace around while on her call in the walkway. Why even bother going to a cafe if you're going to treat it like your own personal office? And if you do take a work call, use your inside voice. What do you think? Absolutely. There's no there's totally no excuse agree. for that. You got it. You got to be respectful because we're all we're all here. It's post pandemic. People can forgot you, how to live with each other or like well, social. Ma- right. And can you imagine you're in this cute coffee place and all of a sudden there's this person just walking through the middle of it being like, and you tell Johnson that I will not stand for this and buy, sell, buy, sell, funny money, boom, ba. <laughs> like what is going on? I'd rather you listen to music with no headphones. Right. Than, right. Than, than, <laughs> than do margin call. At the, right. at the coffee shop. And no, it's, thank this, you. In the, in, again, this, the problem is we're in this work from home hybrid lifestyle and we're all trying to like figure out where we fit in. Am I a home worker? Am I a cafe worker? Do I want to go in the office? The office has been taken away from me. I have the option. We're looking for comfort. We're looking to find our best place. And just because it's comfortable for you doesn't mean you can make other people feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Go on, take it outside. Take the call outside. I Have don't mind. Decency. That's the thing. I've been yelled at for talking loud on the phone outside, and I'm like, this is outside. Yeah. This is outside. We are not I can't in go your, anywhere else. I, yeah. this is, I don't know what else to do. You're in New York fucking city. Okay? Yeah. It's got, me and the garbage truck are going to make some noise. Yeah. You're about to. There's a murder around the corner. I, I can talk, talk. Somebody told you that outside? That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, it's, it's happened a couple times, actually. That's and. Crazy. But I, it's crazy. And and here's the thing. If you're in these coffee shops, you should feel lucky that you have this. Like these yeah. coffee shops, you're what are you spending? Five dollars on one cup of coffee, maybe ten if you get a water, yeah. and you're allowed to just work there. You should you should feel lucky that they're not ushering you out to go work at a we work. You're yeah. saving so much money. Oh, yeah. So like let's let's give it back by understanding like that you are lucky for having a coffee shop that presi- provides you know I there's coffee shops in New York that are like we're a no laptop place and you like oh yeah wow like I, I I I and you go you really were fed up and I get it that's their right but it's like we have to you have to keep these places like a like a good treasure you know yeah like your college library like you're gonna run right. into them again. Sometimes the right. city is too big and you're like, oh, I'll never see that person again. I'm like, we live in Astoria. Like, I'm probably right. going to see you. <laughs> right. Like, you're my, there's no HR for the coffee shop. It's a coworker. Yeah. You're like, this guy was so loud. Right. We need a coffee shop HR. Yeah. We need we need someone to come in there and go, miss, you're going to have to come with me. We're going to talk to you. Sign the sexual harassment waiver before you <laughs> drink your coffee. That'd be great. J Train Podcast at Juma.com. J Train Podcast at Juma.com. Gabe Malika, thank you for coming in the lounge. Oh, I love the lounge, Jared. I appreciate you. you. Your fans are the coolest. They can DM me anytime for a promo code. And you're always invited, my friend. Love it. Can't wait. Uh, Solo. It's the one man show off Broadway, L.A. Go follow at Gabe Malika. I'm Jared Freed. We're here every Thursday in the luxury lounge. Keep sending your emails back next week. Boom.